My name is Jeremy Abbey, Certified Executive Chef, and welcome to the Certified Culinary Educator Demonstration Start off with uh, getting right to some basic station setup. I have a nice clean white cutting board. I love a bench scraper, that way we're not using a knife to uh, scrape up our uh, vegetables and put them to where our final result is. I have a sanitizing bucket with a sanitizing solution, some clean white towels. I'm going to move this underneath the table and just get it out of the way. We have a waste bucket, and then we have for our final result where we're going to put the end result of our beautiful knife cuts. I like to use a Santuco chef knife, but each chef has their own preferences. I like the Mirabi, it's a folded Japanese steel. It works very, very nicely, it holds a beautiful, beautiful edge. So enough about talking and let's get to some cutting. We're going to start off with uh, cutting some celery root. Celery root is a tuberous vegetable. It grows underground and it is a root. Oh, the split fell apart. And you can see this is what it looks like when it grows underground. And then uh, we need to peel this up. I have one here peeled already. And all you do is trim off the edges, the top and the bottom, just to create that clean flat surface. And what I like to do is just run the knife all the way around, cleaning off just a little bit of the outside just to clean it up. And you can see through the process, we end up with a beautiful clean celery root, just like that. So now we have a clean celery root that's not going to roll around on us. Anytime we have a round vegetable, we want to make sure we cut with a flat surface, that way it doesn't roll. We'll start with a large dice. A large dice, 3 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch cube. So we're looking for six even sides. So how are we going to do that? We have a round vegetable and we need to turn it into a square. The best way and the only way to really do it is to start with panels. So once again, we get the clean side, straight side. We're going to go about 3 quarters of an inch into a panel, another three quarter of an inch panel, another three quarter of an inch panel. And now we have panel cuts of our celery root. And we have our flat side. I always like to use a cutting board for a flat edge so I can line up my flat sides, visualize that 90 degree angle, and cut a 90 degree angle. So now I have one square. Go three quarter inches again, and three quarter inches. Now I have three quarter inch panels, Line it up again on the flat side of it, and go three quarter inch. Now I have large dice. Do the rest of our panels. I love cooking with celery root. It has a very intense celery flavor. You can treat it just like a mashed potato. We'll take a bowl for our large dice. Take our usable trim and save them for later. These we're going to cook up into our celery mash or celery root puree, which we're going to use for our chicken dish. And medium dice is a half inch by a half inch by a half inch. So we're going to cut this slightly smaller into our half inch panels. Again, bring it over to the edge of the cutting board so you can use that flat surface in that 90 degree angle. This time we're cutting medium, so we're going to go a half inch, and we get our half inch panels, and now half inch dice. Once more. And obviously as young culinarians, you're not going to get your, visually you're not going to get you perfect every time. But through practice, you start to see visually what a half inch looks like. You work on holding your wrist muscles so your knife doesn't shake when you cut. A lot of young people with knives move the blade and you get a crooked side on your medium dice, small dice, and large dice. Make our usable trim. Again, we'll save all this for our celery root puree. Next, we'll do a small dice of a carrot. These carrots have already been peeled, and again, it's brown. So what are we going to do? I always like to cut them in half first. A little bit easier to work with. And you can see it's brown, so it's rolling around on me. We don't want it rolling, so we're going to cut a flat panel and 
just take off the edge so we can get it where it doesn't roll. Now, it won't roll. A small dice is a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch cube. So we're going to cut our quarter inch panels. As we cut our quarter inch panels out of these carrots, you can start to visually see that panel coming together. All of these little trims can be used for stock, for soup, for purees, for roasting, for matignon, and various other applications in the kitchen. Definitely not garbage. Then we come to the edge again, and we cube it up, and we make our small dice. Then we have a small dice. Next, we'll move into a potato. Here I have just some Idaho baking potatoes. This is a 90 count. 90 count refers to the size of the potato. And we have them peeled and stored in water so they don't oxidize. Quite often this step gets left behind. It's always good to have a bucket of water or a container of water right by you when you're peeling the potatoes and dump them right in the water so they don't oxidize as you're peeling. If you start peeling 50, 100 pounds of potatoes, you're going to end up with some oxidized potatoes. So again, we have a, roll, a rolling vegetable around one. So again, we're going to take it and panel and straighten off one side. That's so it doesn't roll around on us. The nice thing about these Moravi knives and the Asian Santucos is quite often they're hollow ground. If you can see though, they put little divots in the hole in the blade. It prevents the starch from sticking to the blade. And the starch from the potato will then not stick to the blade and you can increase your speed. Renoise is a small tiny dice one eighth by one eighth by one eighth cube. Again, it's used in a lot more finishing of a dish, but for demonstration purposes today, we'll just uh, show you how to cut the grenoise. Again, you cut the panels, you cut the panels, and you're getting one eighth of an inch thick. You can see the panel is roughly one eighth of an inch thick. Again, we can save all of these little pieces that were just too small to deal with so we can get those perfect Brunoise cuts and we can use those for mashed potatoes or another application. A julienne cut is one eighth by one eighth by two inches. And a julienne we can then take and turn into Brunoise. A Brunoise is a one eighth by one eighth by one eighth small cube dice. So we'll start with our flat side and we'll cut our one eighth of an inch panels, putting our trim back into the bucket of water, that way we have, we can use it for mashed potatoes or another application. I'm thinking a soup or to flavor a soup, but it's definitely not garbage. We'll cut our one eighth inch panels through the whole potato. Once we get that done, we can take a few of the panels and cut into one eighth inch strips. Now we have 1 8 inch strips that are just a little bit long. At this point I always like to teach culinarians about the knife that you're using. The knife that you're using has little rivets on it. The rivets are roughly an inch and a half to two inches long. On this knife they're an inch and a half. On most classical French knives they're two inches long. So I can take my 1 8 inch strip and see how long of a strip do I need to go. This is about an inch and a half, so I'm going to go right about here. So now we'll take our panels, line them up on the side of our cutting board again, square off the one end, and cut our two inch juliennes. Now our juliennes we're going to use for our finished chicken dish, so we're going to do up a couple of these. We want to use our bench scraper so we're not dulling our knife on the cutting board. So again, we have our stacked eighth of an inch panels and we're going to cut into our eighth of an inch strips. Keeping our strips together, that way it will save time in the end. Line them up on our cutting board on the edge. Square off the end and cut into our two inch strips. The rest of these we can turn into a brunoise cut. We can take a little bit of ends that are left over and cut them into 1 8 inch cubes. So 
So now we have our Grenoise potatoes. Get rid of these little scraps. Because it's important that when you go to cook a vegetable, that they're all consistently the same size, where smaller vegetables will get cooked quicker than larger vegetables. Not to mention the aesthetic reasons at the end of the dish, because when you put a brunoise carrot onto a plate that's been cooked nicely, you want it to look nice for the guest. It'll add a dimension of skill, and you can charge more money. So it's nice to take this opportunity in culinary school and early on in your careers to really form the foundations of good knife skills. So once again, we'll cut our panels into 1 8 inch panels. And we can cut these into julienne and brunoise again. Saving all of our scrap again for soup or for mashed potatoes or other applications. Cut them into 1 8 inch strips. Bring them back to the edge just to line them up. Make sure they're all perfectly even. Cut them into our 2 inch juliennes. Get rid of this. Finish this one up as a brunoise, and we'll move on to the next vegetable. Wipe the starch off of our board, off of our bench scraper, and off of our knife. Next, we'll move to a tomato cocktail. I have some beautiful on the vine tomatoes that we'll just twist right off the vine. A cocktail tomato we're going to use for our hunter sauce in the end. So we'll do, let's say, three. A cocktail tomato is a tomato that's been peeled, seeded, and then diced. So taking a small knife, what we're going to do is we're going to score the skin right on the top. Some chefs like to take out the stem end at this point, and you can. You'll find whatever's easiest for you. Take out the stem, and then we score the edge again. And what we're going to do behind me is I have some boiling water, and to get the skin off, we're going to plunge these in boiling water for about 5 to 10 seconds, just until the skin starts to blister. Then we're going to rapidly shock them in an ice bath. When we take them out of the ice bath, we'll peel the skins off. From there, we'll take the seeds out and we'll dice them up. Score the skin. And we'll come over here. Plunge right in. I have some ice water ready. About 80% ice and 20% water. That way it stays just really, really cold. A slotted spoon will get these out. And you'll see them. You'll see the skin start to peel away from the flesh. And that's all you want to do. Depending on how ripe the tomato is will determine how long you need to really cook them. But you want to keep them as raw as possible. See, the skin is just starting to blister on this tomato, so we'll plunge it into the ice water. Again, just starting to blister off the way from the flesh, plunge it into the ice water, and again on our third tomato. Plunge it into the ice water. Back over to our table. Beautiful tomato. Now we have, and you can see the skin just falls right off. And we just peel the tomato we have a skinless tomato. Again, this sets the difference between the professional cook and the home cook. There's not too many home cooks. Now we have our peeled tomatoes. And now in order to seed them, all we're going to do is cut them in half and cut them in quarters. Now at this point, you want to be careful that all these seeds don't spray all over your cutting board. 
So we'll take them and just fillet that seed right out of it. And now we have a nice skinless seedless tomato fillet. You can use these for stock depending on the operation you're working in. But these are full of flavor. And if you have some left behind, you just want to squeeze out the seed. So again, we'll do that with this. Notice my board is very, very clean right now. I'm not getting any seeds left behind. That way in the end, we won't have any seeds in our tomato compensate. Again, that attention to detail is really going to set you apart in the industry. Classically, it's a small dice to a Bernoise dice, but for utilization purposes, I like to use the whole tomato. Pause for a second, clean up our tomato mess. Get into the end of our knife skills. 